Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech, and it has been a long time since I've actually covered OnePlus. They were nice enough to send this along, it's the OnePlus 11, and they also sent along their new OnePlus Buds Pro 2. So we'll take a look at both of those, and let's go ahead and get this open. Now this starts at $699 with 8GB of RAM and up to 128GB of storage, or $799 for 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. And that's what we have here. It comes in Titan Black or Eternal Green. You can see this one is Eternal Green and it has some really great specs. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got. So let's cut these two side pieces here and get into the box. So let's open this up, see, see what we've got here and you'll see it says Never Settle. So of course, just like we've had for a long time, they've got similar packaging. And inside, looks like we have an adapter, USB-C to USB-A, and then a bunch of different paperwork or literature, even some stickers. So we have a welcome guide, we have a quick guide, we also have a SIM card removal tool right here, we also have a safety guide, and like I said, some stickers that we have included in the box. Let's set this aside and let's take a look at the phone here or what's underneath it. So this is the phone itself. Let's set that down just for a moment and see what else we've got in the box. So there's a little pull tab here. It's a little hard to get to, there we go. And it looks with, like we've got a charger. Of course, they're known for their super fast charging. 80 watts is what we should have here in the US. So an 80 watt power supply, this should give you a full charge in about 25 minutes or so, or 27 minutes according to OnePlus. And then also in the box, let's see what we've got here. So this is a USB-A to USB-C. So it looks like we plug in the USB-A here to get that incredibly fast charging. Now let's set all of this aside and take a closer look at the phone. So we'll go ahead and remove the wrapper here. There we go. Initial impressions is it's actually a little bit narrower than I was expecting. Let's flip this over. I'll remove the sticker here on the back. Now, initially this color looks much better in person than I've actually seen online. So it looks really nice. So let's go around the outside and take a look at it. So on the right hand side, we have our power sleep wake button, and then we have our silent switch, which they're known for. It's always great to see that. And then nothing else on the bottom. Looks like we've got our microphone and speakers along with USB-C and a SIM card tray and a microphone. Now this does not have expandable storage, so you won't have that, but you do have a SIM card tray, which is nice. And then on this side, we actually have a volume button. So not a whole lot as far as buttons. And then on the top, we have a microphone. It looks like a couple different microphones. On the front, they have a pre-installed screen protector, as you can see here. On the back, we have three cameras, and it says Hasselblad. Of course, we've got our flash there as well. So I'm really interested to see what this camera is like. Let's go ahead and boot it up, and we'll talk about specs. Now, internally, we have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, and they have the Cryo Velocity VC cooling system. So that should help keep it nice and cool. Again, this has 16 gigs of RAM, UFS 4.0 storage, RAM Vita, which is machine learning to help them manage the overall storage. And they're saying up to 44 applications active in the background at once without it actually having to close that application down. Now let's turn it on. And this display is a 6.7 inch display. So see if it turns on here. There we go. And it's a 2K display and 10 bit. So 1440 by 3216 with 525 pixels per inch. It's 120 Hertz LTPO 3.0 and can go down to one Hertz for the always on display. It supports Dolby vision, HDR 10 plus certification and has Dolby Atmos support with dual reality speakers is what they're actually calling it. I don't see much of a speaker at the top there though. Now let's go ahead and get it set up. We'll select our language, then we'll select the region, tap continue, and then we have to agree to the user agreement. We also have the user experience program and system stability improvements. Those are optional. So if you don't want those, we'll leave those off. And then it says connect to a mobile network. So you can use an eSIM. It says SIM2 will be disabled if you use eSIM. 
We'll just tap next for now and connect to Wi-Fi. It's connected and it's nice that it's actually telling us what the networks are as far as the frequencies available, 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz. We'll tap next. Now we can transfer our apps and data. If we want to do that, we'll just tap don't copy for now. And then it says checking info. And then it wants us to sign in with a Google account. I'll skip that just to get through this very quickly. We'll sign into that a little bit later. Of course we'll hit accept, and then we can set up a fingerprint sensor or face or password. We'll set up fingerprint and it wants us to set a lock screen password using the typical Android setup. We'll use numeric. And of course, this is not a very secure password, but I just wanted to set it up for this video. And now we'll place our finger over the fingerprint sensor. Now I do have to say that when I was actually typing in my network password, one thing I noticed is the haptic feedback on this phone is quite strong. It's pretty good. And I actually can feel it every time I place my finger down with the fingerprint sensor as well. So it seems to work really well. Now it says review additional apps and these are pre-installed if you want to keep those or not, we'll hit okay. Now it says getting your phone ready and then join the red cable club. So you can extend your warranty. You get different trade in subsidies, exclusive merchandise and third party benefits. So you can sign in or you can just skip that for now. Now you have the option for navigation buttons or gestures. I prefer gestures, but you can set that however you'd like. We'll go to next and you'll see it says oxygen OS. Now I've been using OnePlus since the very first OnePlus phone. I really preferred their minimal, very sort of pixel or Google like operating system. So I'm curious to see what this one will be like. So initial impressions is the wallpaper is actually quite nice and it looks pretty stock other than the square icons. You'll see it says permission request and it's sort of downloading everything right now. So let's go into settings, see what we've got here. So we'll go into about this device and you'll see the actual information about it. That's really laid out quite nicely. We have Android 13 and it's on the December 5th security update. Hopefully this will get an update soon. It may take a little bit since we probably have some updates here and we already do. So I'll have to install that, that it says it's already upgraded or upgraded December. So we'll wait for this to install. Now let's unbox the OnePlus Buds Pro 2. These are in Arbor Green. They also come in Obsidian Black, and this will be 179 in the US for these. You can see the certification on the front of Hi-Res Audio, and they've worked with Dyn Audio as well. Let's see if we can open these up here. There we go. And let's see what we've got. Now they are noise canceling as well. Let's open up the box here and in the box, of course, we've got our paperwork. And as you can see, it says Melody Boost dual driver technology co-created with Dyn Audio. It's supposed to have better separation overall. You'll see it says deeper bass, clearer vocals and purer harmony. And then we've got a user guide and safety and warranty. Let's put these away and let's take a look at the buds themselves. So we'll open them up here and we've got USB-C. They also wirelessly charge. If we open them up, those are the buds. Let's see what we get in the box though. You'll see it says touch area. So it's showing you that they have touch controls on them. And in here, it looks like we've got some different size ear tips and then a little accessories box. And in here, we've got a USB-C to USB-A connector. So a really small one that could be for charging or that's really nice just to have around since it's such a small cable. So let's take a look at these. So it looks like we've got a little pairing button and then we have this plastic piece to keep it from charging here. There we go. And then we have the ear tips. So if we take those off, you can see the end here. And so you've got your charging pieces here. You've got some ports going on. Put that back on and there we go. And then around the bottom, it's sort of got a gloss look to it or a chrome look and nothing else. So I'm going to go ahead and pair these up. Let me just take the plastic off of this one too. We'll put them back in here and see if we can unlock 
the one plus 11 and get these paired. Immediately it shows up, we'll tap connect. And it says tap to pair with this device. So it says connected. It's already connected, we'll hit done, and that's all there is to it. So they're connected now, and you should be able to use them. And as we put them in our ear, I hear it chime immediately, so it recognizes it's in my ear. And then, of course, we can charge with the case. Now, the nice thing about these is they have about nine hours of music playback, and they have 39 hours within the case. It's using Bluetooth 5.3 LE as well. So... We'll have to try these over time and see what it's like. Now it says couldn't connect, but let's go to settings. It's because I put them back in here, but that gives you an idea overall that they, of course, will work. As soon as I opened it up, it actually tells me the charge status there as well. And so these should be really nice. I'll have to use them over the next few days. They are IP55 water resistant and sweat resistant as well, so you could work out with them with no issues. And, of course, they're using Google FastPair, so... These should be pretty nice overall. I've been using the OnePlus 11 about a week or so at this point, and I had some good things and bad things I wanted to mention about it. Mostly good, and the first thing is ergonomics. Because the phone is fairly narrow compared to things like the Pixel 7 Pro, it definitely is easier to hang on to and makes it less slippery for me. I can easily hang on to it. Now, of course, without a case, this is going to be different for everyone, but I find that the overall feel of it isn't as slippery as other, as other phones that are actually glass on the back. So there's something to that, and it's nice and thin, which makes it just feel very modern and sleek. Overall, it's very nice to use with haptics. The haptics, as I mentioned when I was setting up the phone, were really nice. And one thing I noticed is when you scroll up and down in the app drawer, you can feel a little thunk when it gets to the top or bottom. Every time it gets to the bottom or top, you have that little rubber banding, but also a little haptic feedback every time you do that. Also, the switch on the side is something I don't know why more people don't include on their phones. So Apple and OnePlus have had this for a while where you can silent your phone, silence your phone. But one thing that's really nice is you have stepped versions here. And I forgot all about this with OnePlus. So you have ring, then you have vibrate, and then also silent. So it's really nice just to have that as a quick way to silence the phone. And it's definitely something that more people should adopt that haven't already. The fingerprint sensor on this is quite nice as well. So it works pretty quickly, no issues there. Turn the phone on or off, very fast, it unlocks, no issues, and it's nice and fast. Much faster than the Samsung phones in my experience. However, those are using a sonic sensor, this is more of an optical sensor. So this seems to work really well for me. Speed overall is quite good. It's super smooth all of the time and feels as fast as a Pixel phone or anything else. So you'll see just going into the app drawer, scrolling, Nice and smooth. If we want to go into the camera, it opens pretty quickly. If you wanted to snap a photo, there's minimal lag. In general, it's just very fast using it day to day. If we go into different apps, go into the app drawer, close it out, you'll see it says your system is now in optimal condition. Using the phone, it doesn't really feel like it slows down. At least it hasn't over a week or so. Maybe over more time or given more time, it would a little bit, but ColorOS seems to do a good job with this. And the overall settings and things in ColorOS seem to be pretty good. I hadn't really used it before this, and it seems to be nice, no issues whatsoever. And just in general, it's a pleasant thing to use. It's close enough to the original sort of pixel experience, but with a few added niceties here and there. So nicely organized and everything else. Now the cameras on the back are actually quite nice. We have three of them here with a flash and we have a 50 megapixel f 1.8. We have a 48 megapixel f 2.2 ultra wide and a 32 megapixel portrait tele lens with Hasselblad portrait mode. It can record 8K video at 24 frames a second or 4K at 60 frames per second. And I'll show you those in just a moment. And then we also have a 16 megapixel selfie camera at f2.4, and it's about 25 millimeters as far as its wideness. It records in 1080p 30. So if we go into the selfie camera, flip it around here, let's go to video mode. We can go to our settings. You can see different things such as watermark and things like that. And then we have 720p or 1080. 
If I hit record, you can hear what the phone sounds like and also see what the camera looks like. However, this isn't the best video, but it has a specific look to it that I think really comes across well with photos, but not so much with video. So we'll stop the video here and video I'm not super impressed with, but overall the camera seems to be quite good. So you may or may not like the overall look of it with the Hasselblad sort of tuning to it, but I actually kind of like it. So you can see a few different photos here. It does a nice job sort of just capturing the environment. However, switching between lenses, if you go from 1x to say ultra wide to 2x, there's definitely a shift in color overall. The sky looks a little bit different. So that's something I noticed. However, I do like the overall tone that they're giving to the photos within the camera itself. Of course, you have a bunch of different modes you can change and night modes as well. And it does an okay job. It's not amazing, but it works for most people. I wouldn't say it's necessarily the best camera out there, but I think the overall look is something that you're either going to love or you're not going to like at all. But I actually tend to like the, the look of the different photos. Now, battery life on this phone seems to be pretty good. It's 5,000 milliamps as far as the size of the battery, and it easily gets me through a day. If we go into our battery here, Within battery, we'll scroll down and you can see here I'm at 51%. Now I did leave this off the charger at night. It doesn't have wireless charging and we'll talk about that in a moment, but I left the chart, left it off the charger at night. It went from 54% to 53%. So it really didn't lose much overnight for those of you that are concerned about that. And this has what they're calling the battery health engine. So at the core of the technology is both a smart battery health algorithm and battery healing technology. And so they use an improved electrolyte formula, which they say reduces damage done to the anodes and cathodes. And then they have real time temperature monitoring when you're actually charging it. So not only in the phone, but the temperature brick and the cable. And that's something that's really super helpful in this phone. This is the fastest charging I've ever personally used. So if we plug this in, you'll see we're at 51%. We'll plug it in here off the off to the side and let's plug in the phone and see what we've got here so let's plug it in we'll give it a moment you'll see it says charging and then goes to this animation we can watch this in real time speed up the charging and then charge the battery so it sort of likes to dim the screen a lot but you can see how fast this is charging zero to 100 percent in 27 minutes and it's an 80 watt charger so you can literally see it speed up and go up in real time. We're not waiting an hour, hour and a half to charge the phone. Now we're at 53. I actually used this the other day, went to my brother's house about 15 minutes away. I was at 30%. When I got there, I was over 80%. So I had it plugged into my car and it actually was charging. So it's incredible how fast this charges. And you've seen this in real time here and it doesn't even get warm when it's charging that fast. That's something that's a little bit different than what we've seen in other phones. So you'll see we're at 54% now. So if I just left this plugged in while I record this video, it would be at 100% by the time I was done. And you can see it count up in real time. So that's something that's super impressive. Now it doesn't have wireless charging. I would typically just leave my phone on a wireless charger at night, but you don't really need it so much because you could just plug it in while you're getting ready for the day and it would be charged to 100% by the time you were done typically. So it's super fast that way and it's great, but you do need to have their special charging brick. So you'll need to have this charger in order to do that but it's great to have the option if you need it just to sort of get going very fast. One other thing I wanted to mention is the display. The display looks great, has good viewing angles, but it has really bad PWM or pulse width modulation as far as the way it controls brightness. It's flickering the screen faster or slower to control brightness and it's at a low enough rate that it does bother my eyes a bit. So as you can see at 240 frames per second slow motion, you can see it flicker. You can't see this with your eyes, but it's definitely lower than some other phones I've tested. I don't have the actual rate, but you can see that here where it's compared to a couple other phones, it's definitely different and a little bit lower. The other negative really is that it's not the pixel version of Android, but they said they've committed to quite a long time of updates with this four years of updates, five years of security updates. So it should get regular updates like a pixel phone does as well. And signal strength and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth has been pretty great. And so really no issues there. It seems to work fine. We're getting 5G speeds, no issues whatsoever as far as reception. I did want to talk a little bit about the OnePlus Buds. I have been using them for, well, the same amount of time, and I find them very comfortable. 
They seem to work very quickly. They sense when they're actually in your ears. When you remove one, whether you're on an iPhone or you're on an Android phone, it actually stops playing music or video, similar to what you get with AirPods. As far as their overall sound, they sound really good. I'd say they're very similar as far as their noise canceling ability to AirPods Pro 2, and they just have a little bit more bass and maybe more pronounced mids, where the AirPods actually have a little bit more pronounced treble. So that's the difference. I do think they sound great and they're cheaper than some other alternatives as well. So they charge in the case either wirelessly or through USB-C and just connect seamlessly to your phone. So it's great using theirs, these. I've actually used them with a Mac as well while editing video. They connect quickly, no issues whatsoever. They don't have automatic switching or anything, but they work fine and really do a good job as far as that goes. But because you don't have wireless charging on the phone, you can't reverse wireless charge the buds. Other than that though, the OnePlus Buds or OnePlus Buds Pro 2 actually work really, really well. So no complaints there. These are a great option if you want in ear earbuds or earbuds and also have something that cancels noise as well. And I do find them very comfortable. You can adjust the ear tips as well and they do a great job. So no complaints. They sound fantastic and I could definitely recommend them if you're looking for earbuds. As far as anything else, well, there's not much more to talk about after using it. It works just like any other phone. It's super fast and I really enjoy using it. I like the ergonomics a lot of this and it's something that I thought was one of the best phones I've used in a long time as far as just its speed and reliability and of course that charging. It's a little bit different experience and something I think just really gets overlooked is that silent switch. More companies need to add this to their phones. So that's everything. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If there's anything else you want to know about the phone, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.